This week on Hermitcraft. See that number up there in the corner? 119. And look at all the 1.19-ness. Everywhere, there's some over here, I think. Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap. My name is Pixel Riffs. Our writer is Loy XP. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. And be very quiet, it can hear you. Just kidding, it can also smell you. So might as well scream and run. Welcome to Minecraft 1.19, now on Hermitcraft. They have horns to dupes now. Be very afraid. We're gonna blow horn on three. Three. Two. Wait, one. <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> go. What do you mean, wait? Oh, oh, Come yeah. down, wall. Be gone. Be gone blow with you, again. wall. Blow again. Blow him again. Keep blowing. After going all walls of Jericho on the world border, many of the hermits dive straight into the deepest, darkest, and froggiest places of the world, looking for any excuse to poke the new stuff. Of course, in the background of all of this is the newly established reign of His Majesty King Rendog, first of his name, and we're still taking bets on whether or not he'll survive until his first jubilee. So with that said, let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. Starting with Joe Hills, who is hanging on for the changeover to 119, and once the server relaunches, he heads out in search of a new swamp to breed some frogs. Okay, so now here's the experimental part. Can we come over here and put him in the anvil and name him? Mixolotl really depends on being able to give things weird or silly names. Getting hold of some tadpoles and a handful of creative names, Joe stocks the axolotl shop with some tadpoles in buckets so the other hermits can grow their own, and introduces some to the pond by his house, letting them grow up while he replaces the endstone foundation with the new mud bricks. A few more frogs are recruited from a portal off the basalt delta arm of the nether hub so they can be brought back through and ninja vanish all the magma cubes, leaving frog lights in their wake. Bleepinardo! <laughs> <laughs> this this just screams Joe. This has got to be a Joe thing. Frogs are also on XB Crafted's mind, but once he's raised a family of tadpoles, he goes out in search of a little more danger. Tracking down a deep dark biome and disarming his first shrieker, he brings home a bunch of skulk to investigate later, and even drops off a mangrove gift box for Keralis. Yeah, I think I think a certain big-eyed individual would really enjoy having these. These mangrove leaves, maybe? Some of these, anyway. Maybe we'll... You know what? I think I will. The call of the Deep Dark is strong, though, and XB follows up by locating a solitary Shrieker and converting it into a Warden Farm. The first attempt doesn't go entirely according to plan, although all things considered, it could have gone a lot worse. <gasps> Wait. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no! Uh, but yeah, I... Like, everything I've read says that 60 seconds after they know... You know, after they get into their calm state... I've been waiting for a good half hour, <laughs> and these dudes just will not go away. Slowly chewing through the grind for the Total Chaos minigame, Cubfan135 finds himself in need of over a thousand firework rockets. It's an extra crafting challenge since their flight, charge, and colors all need to be varied, lest for a moment the players feel like they have the slightest grasp on the situation. Still, the update Siren's Call convinces Cub to take a break from the pain box and maybe vent his frustrations by killing the Warden over and over. Maybe two videos into the update is too early for a Warden farm, but maybe there's violence to be done and you can do a lot of it at the guy with 500 hit points. Also, take it up with XP Crafted. The frog lights are also soon commodified, since Cub already had a magma cube spawner stashed away in the nether, and it's just a matter of adding frogs and some powder snow for it to turn into a tiny cube processing plant. It's happening! It's happening! There's one, there's two, there's three frog lights right there. Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. The frog light is complete. Impulse SV is beginning to see the light, having remembered he can sell more than just beacons from his lighting shop. But the foundation of many good lamp designs is the end rod, and Impulse realizes he'll need a blaze farm and a chorus farm so he can put two and two together. Oh, it's so much nicer to be able to watch from up here as well. So satisfying. Once the double blaze farm behaves itself, his industrial district grows its own chorus farm, just in time for the king to arrive and claim most of his wealth. <laughs> don't, don't worry about the, the bird, <laughs> everything's gonna be fine, guys. I gotta take my chihuahua out, uh, he needs to go poop, bye! Just when Vintage Beef had acquired a comfortable amount of diamonds, the royal decree sees him flushing it all away, which would have been much more convenient if it happened after he had to buy some replacement gear. And I died in the nether. That's right, a piglin killed me because I was lagging out, I had no idea where I was, all of a sudden, Three quick hits, piglin with a sword, I was dead. You know, just when I thought this whole economy thing was a great idea. 
but at least he's been able to crack on with two new Hermit trading cards this week with stats provided by Gemini Tay and Grian themselves. The two Gs roll some big numbers, and Beef hints that pretty soon the game should be ready for playtesting. I need volunteers to test this thing. Should I just... I mean, I guess Etho's probably always up for, for testing cards. I know, I know Cub's been kind of really excited about this game. But speaking of big numbers, how do you like this statistic? 21 hours to build a mountain. According to iJevin, that's how long it took him to raise the base cliff out of the ground, not counting the process of sketching and planning it, as well as the whole dig from last week, when he removed the mountain that was already there but wasn't pointy enough. Uh, 31,000 dirt was placed, 24,000 stone was placed, and 24k grass. It is, of course, intriguing what fortress he will put onto the cliffside, but also consider the mountain is in fact hollow. There is just as much room for activities in the super flat under the shell as there is on it. And I, I love it. I love the way that it looks. I love the shape. This is the first mountain that I have ever made. As Zoomavoid likes the update so much, he decides to bring as much of it home as possible. Luckily, frogs are portable, mangrove farmable, and even mud can be made from scratch on an industrial level. The woods, not so much. A propagule proves easy enough to multiply, but the actual weeping trees are entirely too much of a dangle to efficiently farm. Not before dedicating half the video to figuring it out, at least. And now it's full of it and we're ready to go. Let's get our first tree. So I head up to the top and ah, oh, it's a wimpy one. Dang it. The final piece to this was, of course, an orphan soul of an LA, who he and Corrales almost convinced to duplicate, despite the server not being on 119.1 at all. As a poet once said, suffocation, no breeding. Corrales, I've made a, I've made a, a grave mistake. We're not in 1.19.1. We're in 1.19. Oh, they don't do You can't duplicate them. We've jumped the gun. Oh no! <laughs> ah. so no, no breeding. Though the new Red Woods does not cancel out the server's need for the old Nether one. So Hypnotized is seen dragging some Nylium to his tiger base and starting a wood farm where the forest once was, as if to mock it. Hypno even shows his inventive side when the hut he builds over the lumber mill has no way of accommodating the taller variants of the nether wart, so he just opens a skylight over the thing and lets the stems mutate through the hole in the roof willy-nilly. Yeah, I think most of the time they grow to about that level or maybe up to around here or something like this, but yes, they do grow massively tall every now and then for some unknown reason. This brings in enough crimson woods to help with the longer stretch of the nether tunnel now that Tango is occupied doing important evil things. While waiting for the wild update to arrive, Pearlescent Moon has been knocking chores off the to-do list so she can make a clean start in 119. The first thing to tidy up is the potion dispenser for her trash shop so that, ironically, it doesn't waste too many of the poison potions providing particles. The nether side of the portal to her base is also kinda trashy, especially when Tango has already set the standard for the nether hub, so Pearl builds up the tunnel so it reaches the turn off to hers, Gems, and Impulse's bases, encourages Gem to build a nether portal of her own, and the pair of them craft an organic tunnel the soup trio can call home. And close pictures. Ow! That's rude, Gem. It doesn't hurt. You're so tough, it doesn't hurt. That hurts my very soul, and my face has got a gem sized. By this time, the monarchy has set in, and Lord of Pearl's personal quests seem to align with the king's. But while she could continue to do the king's bidding, 1.19 arrives, and it's a little more fun to poke these new friends Impulse has made. We uh -huh. shouldn't worry too much about you. Should we go in? Yeah, just, uh... Hello? Just, uh, patch it up behind you, you know? Get yourself stuck in there, you know? Hey, hey! <laughs> I don't have any blocks. Come on in, Pearl, this is fine. As for Gemini Tay, she discovers that Mackenzie is a lamp. I only know one dwarven man who could be capable of this. <laughs> Wait, that's actually kind of cool. Mackenzie is like winking. <laughs> the overworld side of the nether portal has to go somewhere as well, so Jem makes sure to include a quartz portal gazebo as the centerpiece of her growing elven village. Now, if only the elves stopped resisting and moved in properly. Oh, for goodness sake, maybe they're going to this bed. Hold on, I just break a couple things. Okay, dude, there's a bed in there. How about you go to it? No, 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 where? Where Where could you possibly be pathing to? But now to the aforementioned important and evil things. Though the power of the skulk is certainly in its experience capacity, we shouldn't forget that it is also a nice block to build with. For Tango Tech to build with, he explicitly wants to have it as a leitmotif in the Frozen Citadel build, since Warden and all. 
The challenge in that is skulk catalysts don't just make skulk blocks appear, they need to get a steady feed of natural blocks to convert, plus a stream of quality death to really get it going. Tango's brilliant idea is to make a stone generator in the end dimension, then smash Enderman against it. Enderman farms are almost too easy. Platform made, we got a little drop shoot here again. We're okay, hold on. Our guy's not falling? Oh, I <laughs> I'm an idiot. Hey, it helps if you take the rest of the torches out. And it does actually work, maybe even too well. With too many Endermen full damaging on the catalysts, the Skulk has successfully spread right through the entire contraption, covered most of the redstone in its vines, and jammed up the space between the lava and the water. But not before providing like a chest of quality Skulk blocks, so task failed successfully, I suppose. The many new things mean many new challenges, but also a complete sledgehammer to the old ones. This is how Zedaf finds half of the Z advancements he's been filling the season with suddenly undone because there's more mobs to dangle and more animals to get murdered by. The glossy cup pixel art made of glass over his base now hovers over mocking and judging. No better way to win it back than to try something new and explosive. The challenge is to get all 12 creeper music discs in the game at once. And you can actually do that if a skeleton is smart enough to ignite some dynamite for you. Basically, if an arrow from a skeleton ends up on fire, ignites some TNT, lands on some creepers, then you're gonna get a good time. But where would Zed get enough creepers? Enter King Rendog, plenty interested in also getting a gold cup bigger than his crown. Together they do indeed blow through a whole farm's worth of gunpowder friends, and against the odds they'd get the entire Minecraft OST on vinyl. And a bunch of duplicates, but who's counting? He's tracking. There it is! Yes! Here it goes! Yes, he did it! And then we watch! Whoa! <laughs> oh, that's all go? of them in one go! What? Plus, plus <laughs> all of these other ones! Look how many more we got! Now, they are not the only ones in search of a fresh new sound. Good Times with Scar spends a significant amount of time herding the goats headfirst into the obstacles to acquire as many various horns as possible. His jazz collection growing, so does the Base of Dreams project. Down the street from the whimsical roundabout, Scar starts building up the gift shop facades that stretch through the pedestrian zone, even bending along the walkways at angles not entirely friendly to a Minecraft block. For new blocks and inspiration, he ventures into the new swamps and even descends into an ancient city, which greets him a welcome so warm, several wardens come out to meet him. Dude, this is so much easier than I thought. Oh gosh, okay, 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 okay. Let's just be safe about this. The Warden is everyone's new favourite playmate, and Doc M is no exception, although it's kind of refreshing to see that even the goat is afraid of the dark. Okay. No, why do you spawn here? Warden time. Run, 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 run. That doesn't stop him building his own Warden farm, portaling them through to the nether roof, not because it's better for the mob cap, but because he can transport them back to his perimeter and run more tests on them. The first test is whether or not it impresses Etho, which it does. And it seems like the rest of the perimeter does too, even if Doc commits the social crime of talking in an elevator. Oh, yeah, it's a flying machine and there's like uh, signals pulsing through, right? And it's yeah, working like that. That's where you can make it a bit more compact and don't have to watch for sticky blocks or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But obviously you have speed limits, right? If you go faster, we will definitely glitch through the floor. But the second test is whether the chunk-loaded machine will let him casually stroll around an ancient city when the Shriekers are occupied elsewhere. The third test is how many Wardens he can shoot down with a multi-shot mode for his warp speed arrow cannon. And finally there's Iskal, who spends most of his week reckoning with the idea that Ren is the king now. While it hasn't thrown the biggest wrench in his plans, he still chucks out the notion of building storage for his bartering farm, for now. Ren already has a right-hand man in B00, but Iskal knows he's left-handed, so he decides to audition for the king's favour by making an actual audition tape. To be or not to be? That is the question. Ah, actor skull. Next up, sing skull. Regardless of how Hamlet, Prince of Sweden, goes down with Rendog, King of Hermitcraft, we all get the treat of seeing Iskal remodel a custom pumpkin into an even bigger head than usual. Iskal Mega Man. Ah, ah. And that's about it for this week's recap. Our writer is Loy XP, and my name is Pixelriffs. Captions on this video were provided by Liara, and they actually started a hardcore series together, and Zloy is convinced that the safest place for that is the deep dark. You can try and convince him otherwise in the end screen you see right now. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here, and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.